Hi, everyone. My name is Osmin Hargreaves. I am the Shiva Executive Officer of Wikisel Primates Group, Sindhya Emberhat, where our company basically does telemarketing. Uh, initially, before we go into the digital era where everything is dig digitalized and the technology has taken its steps forward, so we were able to do a lot more forward things rather than just typical um, services and products, uh, call by call, phone by phone, uh, telemarketing, the old traditional conventional way. So here it comes where it's social media has taken place and everything else has gone digital. So this is where I am today. I am a branding strategist, a personal branding strategist. So where I'll be talking about digitalization on branding. All right, before I share my slide, uh, I would like to conclude that uh, branding itself is a very powerful word. How we step up on to brand ourselves first rather than our services, our businesses and our products. It is a core value that we brand ourselves as and we know the right way to do it. So branding itself is a very general word. When it comes to branding, we all think of how do we present on how people perceive us um, in, in their own mindset. What do people think about you? What do people say about you when you are not in the room? So that is basically what personal branding is. But how can we actually take it another level, bring more steps forward into digitalizing it? So this is why I am here today to talk more about um, digitalization on branding. Uh, there is online and offline branding, but of course, it's a very casual session. And I am so honored to be one of the speakers today to talk about uh, branding, where it falls in the category of uh, digital assets. Uh, thank you to the organizer of ADAPT Convention 2022 for having me as one of their respective speakers today. So without further ado, I was told that I only have 15 to 20 minutes to talk about this. So I hope that you're all ready to take this roller coaster ride with me to talk about uh, digital digitalization on branding. So without further ado, let's start with my slide. I'm just going to share my slide. So I hope you can see the slide. Uh, all right, so I hope that everyone can see my slide now. Okay, here we are today. I uh, will be talking about digitalization on branding itself. My name is Mr. Azmi Hagreeves. I am the CEO of Recursal Pioneers Group, Sindri Amberhat, and I'm based in uh, Malaysia. I'm based in Kuching, Sarawak, as well as uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So I am honored to represent Malaysia today to be one of the speakers. So this is my company logo, our Registral Finance Group, and this is yours truly. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, let's talk more on branding itself. Okay, so how many of us understand the word personal branding? There's two different things of uh, personal branding and image branding. It's totally different meaning, even though there's a, there is a word branding in it. So personal branding is more on what people perceive of us, what people perceive of you in order for you to sell yourself, like how you sell and how you portray yourself outside. So that is your personal brand. But your image brand is how you sell. You know, the personal branding is how people perceive, but image branding is how you want to sell yourself. So at the end of the day, personal branding and image branding has to be together. You know, it has to be aligned together. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go with the next slide. Okay. So there are offline and online branding skills that we understand today because like i said earlier on in this world of technology world of digitalization the new age the new era has gone to very very wide 
perspective and wide the scope. So it's very interesting that we we do not fully utilize it. It's, it's such a waste if we don't make full use of all this technology that is given to us to sell our products, to sell our services, sell our brand more to globally, to not just in our region area, but to all over the world, internationally, globally, along the line, everybody will know you through digital branding. So how, how do you do that? And what was the difference of offline and online branding scale? So before, before you want to sell your services, you want to sell your company business, first you need to sell yourself. So you are your brand. You are selling yourself as a brand first in order for you to make a trust. There's a two-way communication going on. You know, there's a, a bond. It's always a bond between a seller and a buyer. So it's it's the same thing in business. It's the same thing in selling your brand. You have to build that trust. So in order for you to build that trust, your brand and your rapport and your reputation have to be very, very strong. So how do we do that? How do you sell your brand? First of all, your offline and your online, it has to be aligned. It has to be very systematic. It has to be equivalent and on the parallel side, meaning that it's going to be side by side equal 50 50 because if you sell yourself offline but you are very inactive and illiterate online so there's no such thing as digital branding for you to sell out there because you're just focusing on the focusing on the outside you know so you need to have both capacity in order for you to grow your your digital brand as well so it's a two-way thing. It's an interactive thing. So your online branding includes third party like uh, the media, the web content, the search email, the link in, the social media, all this online branding, it has to be very, very active. You need to master all of it. And in order for people to search about you, everything is there. You know, it's just like a resume. Even your, your Instagram or your Facebook, these are all part of the way to, to have your own digital assets because it's nowadays everything is just online. When people search or Google about you, everything is there right on the surface. So this is online branding. So your online branding has to be very good and very on the surface and out there. So when people search about you, you're there. It means that you're not a ghost. It means you exist in the world of digital. That is number one, the online branding. And then we go to offline. Offline is, of course, the conventional way, the traditional way where it encompasses uh, all of your marketing materials that are not digital. That means physical events, billboards, media placements, posters, simply everything physical that you have, you are selling the conventional way. So that is your offline branding. But offline and online branding together makes the business greater. You know, it takes your visibility on a top-notch tier. A successful branding is when you know how to mix these two together and make your branding more solid. So that is the way to start our, our presentation today. So if you can see the chart here that I prepared for you, on the blue on the left side is all the online uh, online uh, brand that you can surrogate to, like social media, webinar, phone, video, blogs, online publications, email, search, online advertising, groups, online conferences, all on the left side. What am I doing right now is a, is a video conferencing is also the same category in the online brand. And then while on the right side, you have the orange, which is face-to-face, -face, the conventional way. We have networking, we have speaking, we have meetings, we have printing publications, we have direct mail, we have cold calls, we have print advertising, <laughs> associations, trade shows, and whatnot. So at the end of the day, everything will come together online and offline. So these are just some of the categories that I can give. Uh, example, for instance, what are the online brand and what are the face-to-face -face or conventional way. So what is the offline branding in a way? 
Number one, uh, networking activities, right? So face-to-face -face connections, even virtual ones, continue to play a valuable role in, in networking. And what is more, that they can help drive traffic to your website, allowing the contacts you've made in person to learn more about you and your firm. Okay, so this is the conventional way. In many cases, a good, clean handshake is still important. I mean, you all agree with that, right? Nobody, no, nothing tops a very good, firm handshake. It's like being able to put a face with a name. It removes a level of abstraction from your brand and makes your firm more approachable. But you you got to choose your opportunities wisely. You seek out associations or organizations uh, to which your target audience belong. So in time, you might take networking even further by attending or better speaking at national conferences. So this is just the example of offline we're going with networking activities. I, I myself am a networker. I love to go to events, speaking at conferences, uh, mingling around and uh, get to know as many acquaintances and potential clientele right there. So this is the convention, one of the conventional way. And then we have attending association conferences and trade shows. You know, trade shows can provide opportunities um, to network with both prospective buyers and, and other industry leaders. In addition, these events can offer um, other industry leaders like off offline marketing opportunities. Uh, for instance, there are ideal places to distribute your print materials or explore the possibility of becoming a future uh, featured speaker. So which brings uh, to the next technique. Yeah, so these are part of it. Then, of course, uh, when it comes to branding, you there's no way to escape from speaking opportunities. You need to speak up, you need to voice out, and people need to hear your voice. What do you have in store here? What do you have to offer? And what do you have to bring to the table for people? So speaking is a good way to start. Speaking engagements uh, put you directly in front of a highly targeted audience that is prime and ready to hear what you have to say. And they are a proven way to establish your firm's credibility and thought leadership. So this, speaking wise, if those of you are very intimidated when it comes to speaking, so I'll suggest to take uh, personal branding and communication skills class for you to carry yourself well out there, especially through speaking to people. And that is a very, very subjective and a very core first impression basis when you talk to people. So I guess this is one of the, uh, core values, uh, soft skills that you need to learn if you don't uh, really yet. So you need to learn about this, how to speak the right way and take the right opportunities by knowing to speak at the right manner and knowing what to speak as well to your potential clients. And then we have sorry, we have warm calling Warm calling, uh, warm calling is just the opposite of uh, cold calling. You know, cold calling is totally, when you don't know people at all, it's just totally strangers and you make calls. This is part of what we do in telemarketing, telemarketing company. But here is what warm calling is what all about. So high growth firms are having particular success with so-called warm calling. So unlike cold calls, which are a low yield numbers, game warm calls deliver frequent and better quality results so it's just the opposite of cold calls meaning that you know who you're calling you know who you're selling your brand there's a target market that you're selling to so a warm prospect is one who not only knows of your firm but has been exposed to your thought leadership so usually through digital channels like website social media or email marketing through offline techniques such as speaking engagements or books can also build engagement offline. So some firms even use the call itself as an opportunity um, to offer the prospect a piece of valuable content to make their expertise more tangible. And then we have the fifth one is demos. It's the consultation, so the demonstration. So it's like live personal demos and consultations provide a direct connection between buyer and the seller. So as a result, they are one of the most effective bottom of the funnel tools of any kind. So for the first time, a prospect can directly experience the firm's expertise and 
or product. But these activities work best when they're set up by prior marketing interactions. And when it comes to online digital branding, number one, you need to understand your value. That is number one rule, understand your value. If you don't understand your value, everything is a flunk. You don't know your direction. You don't know the direction, everything will be a disaster. So make sure you understand your value and what you can offer. You know, contrary to what some direct response marketers might think, investing in your brand online is not just about spending money on the brand. Instead, it's about building an entity that will resonate with your customers and keep them coming back again and again. So even when there's no deal or promotion to entice them, not only will building your brand online go a long way to boost awareness and build your reputation, but the more people are invested in your brand, the greater the chances are that they will actively seek out and remain loyal. So given that direct response marketers need to recognize that online branding should be a priority as it can help you achieve your goals by driving incremental revenue for your business. So in short, if you want to grow your business online, you first need to grow your own personal brand. Number one rule, value understanding. So once you understand that, you're good to go to the next one. Or oh, the second one is researching your audience. I will tell this to my students everywhere. When you research your audience, you understand their needs and their niche. Each and every one of your potential clients, you need to have a personal bond to it so that you understand them. To build your brand online, you must first have a clear understanding of your audience, especially before you begin cheating content strategies and communication plans. So fortunately, there are plenty of tools out there that can help you identify your target audience. Then the third one is giving your brand a voice. So when it comes to digitalizing, when it comes to technology, your brand is no longer, it's just a brand. You can give your voice, you can give a brand to your to the voice. Uh, when you, when you give voice to the brand, it, it gives more personality. It gives more life to it, you know? So based on your research, determine what your audience wants to hear and what message you want to put forward, what message you want to portray. This will form the foundation for your brand's voice. But in doing so, you keep the following in mind that have an open mind and consider all ideas when creating content, speak with your audience not at them as people respond better to a conversation that relates to them and engage them. So being consistent in your messaging as people look for consistency in a brand. The fourth one is balancing your media mix. You work to build your brand through multiple channels. So use display and content networks to build your brand through repetitions and get your ads out in front of your target audience using behavioral targeting, site-specific targeting, and re -messaging. So from an organic search perspective, make sure that your brand name and messaging is consistent in your title tags and your meta description. So this is hardcore value. Hashtags. Hashtags really, really work these days. So this is part of your branding when it comes to digital, when it comes to online. In addition, be sure that your messaging is consistent with your brand voice through that your various channels. Include paid search, sponsored paid search. Nowadays, we have TikTok. TikTok users have been making a lot of businesses today with just doing live. You know, so by creating consistent messaging throughout the buying cycle, you allow consumers to continually recognize and recall your brand. So this will make you the clear choice when customers are ready to make a purchase. And the fifth one is planning your social media integration. Like I said earlier on, your social media is your online resume where people can search for you there. Everything you need to know is just A to Z. It's all there. It's an open book. You're an open book. Everybody can see you. So what do you want a brand to say or do online? So what types of interactions do you want your consumers to have with your businesses? Is Facebook right for you? Twitter, you may not have all the answers, but a little research should help you understand where your audience is and how to interact with them. You start by listening and seeing who is talking about your brand. You need to know your, your target market. Who are your loyal customers? What are their age range? so that you understand them better and how to give the perfect and the best service and what your customers wants and needs, and you can deliver it to them successfully. So this is 
one of the ways, one of the important ways that you need to understand. So start by listening and seeing who is talking about your brand. If no one is, then start the conversation. But remember, if, if it's a conversation leading to interaction, not a means to force a message on consumers. Your brand will be on the path to grow in popularity online in no time if remember to treat social media as a conversation. The sixth one is building up your reputation online. So how do we do that? You know, like there's a lot of people, especially my clients, they ask these questions. How do I build my personal recognition? Like how do I get people to write more about me on articles? You know, sometimes when people say that, oh, I have a very fine blue tick on Instagram, meaning that I have article written about me. So how do I get that blue tick? Do I need to do I need to be a somebody? Do I need to be a public figure in order for me to be verified on Instagram? Well, not necessarily. You don't need to be a celebrity. You don't need to be a public figure. All you need to have is just articles written about you and you exist. When you exist, there are ways to get verified easily. So building a reputation online is similar to a networking breakfast, but it's not as easy and it takes more time. First, it's important to have a clearly defined strategy for reaching your audience. And next, you need to identify the tactics you will use in the process. For instance, be sure to um, leverage any existing offline partnerships you have in order to grow your reputation online. And doing so will not only help build links pointing back to your website, but it can also enhance your organic search presence. So overall, the more prevalent your brand becomes in the mind of your reputable peers, the stronger your reputation will grow online. So that's just how it is. Step by step, you, you're getting there in the right direction. And now let's take a look at our social media and online presence. I want all of you to study your social media and your LinkedIn profile and just see how active you are and what kind of post uh, do you post to make sure the social integration is there? Make sure that what you post uh, on your LinkedIn and on your Instagram and any social media at all, portray what kind of services and what kind of businessmen, uh, what kind of services that you do, it portrays and it equivalent and it's parallel on what you do. So like I said in the, in the beginning, Profile, image branding, and personal branding, it has to be 50-50. It has to be aligned together so people will have more trust in having a business or doing a business or or even investing in you. So th this is what are the few things that you need to have. <laughs> so how do you align online presence to offline brand? Okay, the first of all, make sure how you carry yourself in real life match your profile on social media. So this is very, 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 very important. Like I said, if you're active on social media and you're also active conventional physical way. So that will align. And then make sure your concept and ideology match what you post on social media. If not, you are not successfully selling yourself uh, online. If, if you don't, match your ideology and concept where physically you are more to towards this kind of person and online you are more to different kind of concept so it, it's that it doesn't match so your people or your customers potential customers potential clientele might get mixed up and they might get confused when they're confused and the confidence is not there and they will start thinking and contemplate to do business with you whether this brand is strong whether this brand is really, really, uh, you know, secure enough for, for me to invest or for me to, to have a business with. So be, be careful with that. And then make sure you don't post unnecessary things that can tarnish or jeopardize your image. Okay, make sure that you only post anything that's relatable to what you do only. So this is the B2B content marketing tactic usage. Social media content other than blogs is 93%. Case studies, we have 82%. And then we have blogs, uh, 81%. E-newsletters, 81%. In-person events, we have 81%. Articles on website, 79%. Videos, 79%. Illustration, photos, 76%. White papers, uh, 71%. Infographics, 67%. Webinar or webcast, 66%. And online presentations is 
Now, these are the B2B content marketing tactic usage. So in purple way to boost your brand, so I'm going to show you a seven strategies to increase your brand visibility in a digital world. Okay, so number one, you need to have an effective personalized responses to social media engagement. Okay, and then the second one is ensure consistency on content and post frequently. Okay, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I think there's something wrong with my slide there. You can't see number third one. Oh, okay, it's all right then. We just jump to the fifth one. Maximizing the use of visual content to boost sharing. And the sixth one is use guest blogging to showcase your story stories. And then let me move this. And then the seventh one is offer action advice to potential customers. So these are the top seven online visibility for creating your brand awareness in a digital world. So here are a few techniques that you can use to add value to your online brand visibility campaigns. So I want you to uh, read through this and try to adapt and apply everything and just see the differences, what you do on your digital brand. So um, I'm just going to give you a very quick example of what strong and weak brands on digital branding. Okay, for example, number one is high awareness. A strong brand has high awareness. You target your audience knows who you are. And for a weak brand, very secure, zero to low awareness. You struggle to connect with your target audience. And a strong brand has strategic alignment. Your brand reflects your culture and vision. While strategic mismatch, your brand doesn't align with your vision and culture. So a strong brand has a clear message. Uh, people know exactly what you do and what you serve. While the weak brand, people struggle or they're kind of confused with what you're doing, who you serve, okay? And, and distinctive image, your brand image is unique and memorable. While generic image, your brand image is easily confused with others. And loyal customers are raving fans who regularly refer others. This is a very good one. Power of referral. Like I said, one, people are very satisfied of you. They will refer you to someone else. So when loyal customers have you and they're satisfied with your service, they will just refer you to people right away. And then these loyal customers rarely come back or refer others to you. Enthusiastic team, your employees are your biggest advocates. While the indifferent team, your team isn't excited to even wear or you know promote your logo. There must be something wrong somewhere. And then consistent image, consistent usage. Branding is used consistent across all company channels, while a weak brand is inconsistent usage. Branding is not used uniformly and across all company channels. So these are just some of the examples that I can give you of what a strong and weak. Now we're going to find your style and strengths. Okay, these are the common leadership styles that you know. Okay, we have coach, visionary, uh, servant, autocratic, laissez-faire or hands-off, autocratic and delegatory, democratic, and pace setter, transformational, uh, transactional, and bureaucratic. So these are the common leadership styles. You can even adapt and uh, bring all these values into your digital brand as well. So I'm trying to keep up with the time. I only have like, what, 15 to 20 minutes. So I don't want to be uh, exceeding than 20 minutes. And I don't want to be less than 15 minutes. So I'm counting my clock right now. So which one are you? So we have uh, this T-I-C-S. We have a dominance. We have conscientiousness. We have influence. And we have steadiness. So I believe uh, understanding this chart, I want you to go back and do a research on Google. Understanding this will make it easier for you to understand what kind of brand, uh, how do how to sell yourself online on a digital world. So we have dominance, where uh, we have a, a mix up between dominance and influence. We have a, a mix up between dominance and consciousness. We have a mix up of steadiness and influence. So. You need to study this yourself. And if I wanted to tell you one by one, we're, going, we're not going to have extra enough time today. So make sure that you study this chart so that you can understand yourself better, understand your strengths and weaknesses in order for you to know what kind of brand and how can you severe your, your digital brand online. All right. So creating a powerful persona and reputation on digital world it doesn't take much. 
Uh, first, we need to take a personality test in order for you to create a powerful online digital brand. So this is part of my uh, interesting way. So you know this, I mean, everybody knows this. We have extrovert, we have introvert, we have sensing, we have intuition, thinking, feeling, judging, perceiving. So this is also a chart of personality test. So for me, for myself, I am an extrovert. So I'm an E and then I'm an, uh, and I'm an uh, S. I don't really go on my guts. I don't really go on my intuition. So I'm more on sensing. So it's E, S. And I'm more of a thinking person than feeling because if you were to listen to your feelings more, it's going to be emotionally valued. So if everything is emotionally based, sometimes it can get you to disheartening. So make sure that uh, every, everything is just 50-50. Thinking and feeling is equally small. As a person, personally, I think I'm more on a thinking side. So it's E-S-T-P. So I'm more of E-S-T-P. So understand that value and then read it through the test so you can understand how to uh, sell yourself in a digital world. So you can see the results here. I'm sure that everybody has gone through uh, all these shots and they understand. So uh, for, for instance, INTJ, the architect, imaginative strategic planners, we have INTP, the logician. So it's, an, it's, it's of all the traits, we have our own personality so that we can understand our own strengths and weakness, opportunities and threats, and understand your values more. Uh, like I said earlier on, in order for you to sell your brand, you need to understand yourself and understand your own values. You can sell yourself better after understanding what kind of elements you can put into and serve people. So creating a powerful persona and reputation, uh, five steps uh, online to digital world. Uh, the, five, the fifth one, Okay, so all this, there are more to, there are more than five actually, but I'm just going to give you uh, the five main, main steps to maintain a positive uh, online digital brand. Okay, the step one, you're focusing only on your brand. Okay, I know there's a lot of rival companies, a lot of competition online, but do not put your focus too much on them, but rather put the focus on yourself and how to grow yourself. Okay, the grass is always greener on your end than the other places. So make sure you focus on your brand. Maintaining a positive online reputation starts with developing a strong brand that stands for your core values and mission statement. And step two, access your current search engine results. Uh, I have I have told this to people that make sure that you Google yourself. Have anyone Google themselves yet? I don't I don't think that anyone have not Googled themselves in this era. I mean, I, I myself have Googled myself at least once a week to make sure that there's a new article written about me to make sure that, uh, you know, what do people have to say about me? Maybe there's an interview that I missed out. So make sure that you access your current search engine result. Make sure it's the latest one or on the unwanted, unnecessary news that might, you know, jeopardize your reputation. You might want to get rid of that, right? So make sure that you... Uh, regularly access your current search engine results. You start by simply Googling yourself or your company and take note of what comes up and whether your search results are more positive or more negative, okay? And then step three is monitoring your search result. Uh, keep a careful watch on what is being said about you online. So there are plenty of tools available to monitor your online reputation. The fourth one is uh, responding to comments, reviews, and other mentions. So respond to comments, whether they are positive or negative. If you are receiving an influx of negative reviews, work to improve the problem to, to avoid repeating it in the future. So make sure that you are open to const constructive criticism and you're not the kind of person who's just going to take it personally uh, and lash out on people as comments, negative comments on you, you're just going to lash out. That's not the right way for you to you know, master your online digital brand if you can't even take constructive criticism. So make sure you have an open mind about that, okay? After all, they're just going to make you even wiser person at the end of the day, okay? And the fifth one is create positive content. I've said it again. I've said it before. I've said it again. I've said, I'm going to say it again a million times. A brand, offline, digital, be it whatnot, you need to have a creative, positive content okay if it's negative nobody wants to do a business with you my friend so make sure you create positive content focus on the channels you control your website 
the blogs, social media pages to work your content into search results. So all of this will come to your digital assets. Your brand is one of the digital assets that you can sell. It's not just Bitcoins. It's not just money. It's not just something that you can cash out. But your own brand is one of the ways one of the ways for you to sell, it's an asset for you. That is your online asset, digital asset that you can sell to people online. And there's nothing more worthy than your own self. So which is why I categorize this uh, topic in a digital asset category. So I, now we go for the power of collaboration. You know, the collaboration um, is very, very strong. You collaborate with people and everything else is just history. When you collaborate with someone, it means people have heard of you and they will refer you to uh, someone else. When you when you do this, there's potential that your online digital brand has secured more placements online, right? So the benefits of core branding or complementary partnerships. Of course, number one, you have shared resources online. Okay, and then it reduced costs and hands and higher margins. And then branding boosts, especially if both the brands are renowned. Okay, shared risk, all the risk is not borne by one brand. And then you have better sales and customer relations, additional expertise. Financing becomes easier as two brands are intertwined. And then you have potential new customers because of the collaboration. So you have both ways, you can go both ways. So people heard about you more and the engagement is more. So this is why the benefits of co-branding and partnerships and collaboration uh, in digital world, in digital brand, will make it or break it. So make sure that you do it the right way. All the steps are here uh, to help you understand more how, do you can, how you can master your digital brand online. And then the five proven steps to successfully collaborate with brands. Uh, of course, we have to ensure brands that can find you easily. All right, Start to engage with brands by tagging them when you create new content online. Uh, also use hashtags with between uh, 50 or 500,000 users, users with posting, for example, something that is in trend. So make sure that when you do a trend, when you post up, make sure that you use the hashtag which is in trend. Okay, so also be sure to like, comment, and share their content as well. And discover the right brands to pitch to. Use Instagram to find brands that you admire and look at the suggestions uh, for you. Drop down to see who else uh, that Instagram or other social media suggests. So you'll discover new brands to pitch to. Excuse me. And then you get feedbacks from brands that you work with if you reach out to a brand and you don't get the opportunity to work with them you know right away ask for a feedback okay there's nothing to lose if you go right approach them i i'm the kind of person i always approach people so what do you do typically you look for in bloggers or influencers is there a certain time of the year when they finalize uh, their marketing budget so make sure you understand all this and then you make contact with brands that you love. You know, find the email and name of someone who works in the brand. So your pitch email should start with an intro, uh, follow up with social media stats and lead your idea and how to promote them and why the partnership would benefit them and end with your contact info. So I would suggest start today. Do not be scared. It's just your digital brand. So don't be scared. I mean, everyone starts somewhere. If some of you are having a better physical brand conventional way so it's time to adjust and adapt since the word today is adapt we are in adapt convention so this is in the era that we adapt to the new technology so we need to adapt in the new digital world where you can sell much more when you can produce much more and you profit much more and make income and make acquaintances make clients Everything is just at the end of your fingertips. So we are so thankful of the technology and the digital world that your brand has no limits. Even the sky has no limits these days with the digital brand. So fully utilize it, make full use. And who knows, the sky is the limit. Just soar and you never know what opportunities are there for you. Am I right? So start somewhere. 
So I think uh, I'm almost finished. So these are the extras for all the audience that are with me and throughout the journey that I've been speaking about uh, how to master your digital brand uh, or digitalization on branding. So the extra task that I have all of you for the audience today that have been a very good sport, uh, collaborate with another brand or another project online uh, to improve on your visibility uh, on your digital world. So make sure that you collaborate you know, like I said uh, earlier, co-partnership, uh, refer people, collaborate from brand to brand online and approach them uh, for a bigger and wider scope of visibility of your brand. Uh, in order for you to master your digital brand, you need to have all these steps that I mentioned from the first slide to end of it. So I guess about it. I hope that I have uh, shared some fruitful info and tips for all of the audience today. And uh, I would thank, I would like to thank the organizers of Adapt Convention again for having me as one of the respective speaker. And uh, once again, my name is Arzmi Hagris and it's been a pleasure to talk uh, about digitalization on branding. Thank you very much. Have a good day.